There's no such thing as a biblical concept of sexuality or marriage. Hey everybody, I'm Dan McClellan. I'm a scholar of the Bible and religion. And the main reason there's no such thing as a biblical concept of either of those things is because the Bible is not univocal. It does not speak from a single unified and consistent perspective or with a single unified and consistent voice. The authors were writing from different times, different places, to different audiences for different reasons, and they represented their concepts of sexuality and marriage in very different ways. And if we were going to try to isolate certain unifying principles, they would have nothing to do with the way people talk about biblical sexuality and marriage today. They would primarily have to do with the broader social mores that are influencing the authors of the Bible. For instance, in the Hebrew Bible, polygamy was considered normative. Marriage was primarily transactional, where the woman was treated more as property than as a person. And sex in this time period was not a mutual act engaged in by two equal and autonomous sexual agents. It was an act that an active sexual agent, a man, did to a passive sexual object, which was usually a woman, and the consent or lack thereof of that passive sexual object just wasn't relevant. And this dynamic of domination and submission was so salient that for literally thousands of years we see the notion that it's inappropriate for a man to be on the bottom during sex with his own wife just because he was supposed to be in the dominant position. And we have ancient Mesopotamian texts, and we even have rabbinic literature that talk about how this would rob the man of his vitality for a month or would afflict him with diarrhea. By the time of the New Testament, we have Greek philosophical perspectives taking over, and so sexual desire was seen as one of the baser urges associated more with the corrupt flesh, and so the ideal was actually to overcome that. And so in the Gospels, in the Pauline literature, we see the notion that celibacy is what we should be aiming for. The heavens will be asexual after all. There are parts of the New Testament where marriage is treated as something that is reserved for those who cannot have celibacy, whereas in other parts you have a more traditional Greco-Roman view of marriage that alters the notion of divorce from how it existed throughout the Hebrew Bible. So the concepts of sexuality and marriage are changing throughout the Bible. If you'd like a wonderful discussion of marriage in the Bible, Dr. Jennifer Bird's book, Marriage in the Bible, What Do the Texts Say?, is a wonderful discussion. And when you see people today talking about a biblical concept of sexuality and marriage because they want that concept to aid in their structuring of values and power. Keep in mind this is overwhelmingly driven by right-wing authoritarianism and social dominance orientation and is just picking and choosing some isolated passages from the Bible to aid in the construction of a unifying framework that will render the Bible more meaningful and useful to them today. It's not a reflection of what is actually in the Bible.